All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the Complete ASP.NET course. In the last lecture, we went through several of the controls in the standard toolbox, or so, several of the standard controls, which are the actual server side ASP.NET controls. All right. Um, right now, I'm not going to go over the data controls, but I will mention to you those controls were introduced in ASP.NET 2.0 and they offer a way for you to interact with databases, XML files, and objects. Quite often when you use those, co those uh, tools, rather than writing a lot of code, you just have to drag the tool on and link the, the, the tool up. We're going to go over that in a later lesson. We will go over it, believe me, that's kind of one of the hallmarks of the class. All right, validation. I'm going to just show you a couple things because we're again going to do a whole unit on validation later. All right, But I'm going to suppose in here that you have to put in a first name and you have to put in a last name. So I'm making both the first name and the last name what are called required fields. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into source mode just because it's easier for me to place these controls where I want to if I can see exactly what I'm doing here. All right, and there's my first name, and there's my last name. So right after my first name, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to keep it in the same line here. So right there, I'm going to grab a required field validator, and I'm going to drag it right in there. And I'm going to do a similar type of thing after I've got my last name. All right, so I'm going to do a very similar type of thing. Well, I guess right there. All right. Now, what I just did made me make absolutely no sense to you. But again, what my desire is, is to come in here and run the program again. And when I run the program again, there's my, my validators. I'm going to, if there is no value in here and or if there's no value in there, I want to come up with error messages. So let's just take it from the top. There's my required field validator. Well, required field validator one, hopefully you agree with me here, it's kind of a silly name. Oops. Let me cut that down quite a bit. There we go. So I don't really like the name required field validator one. So I'm going to change that. And I'm going to change that to required field validator first name. Okay? Now, nothing magical happened when I did that. It's just I've changed the name. Right now, if I run this and I get an error, the error message is literally just going to say required field validator, which is kind of a silly message. So I'm going to change that to first name is required exclamation with three exclamation points and you can see what's happening there let's just put in one exclamation point because it might be a little bit too wide right there there okay now that's fine but i have to let the system know what control i'm going to hook that up with well i'm going to hook it up with my text box so i want to go over here to control to validate and I'm going to tell it the one that I want to validate is my first name. Okay? Now, that's all I've done. But I just want to mention one thing to you, and that is, let me save this, and I'm going to run it. And I'm going to leave off, whoop, the control validate. Oh, it's because I didn't add the other one yet. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go back and we'll add that one right now. So that one, I, I have to let it know what, what control I'm going to validate for both of them. That'll be the last name. Okay, we'll fix that in just a sec. In fact, let's do it right now. So that'll be required field validator last name. And that message will say last name is required. All right, so now I've got those both in there. I'm going to save and I'm going to run it. I shouldn't get any error now. But notice what happens. Oh, I did.
the problem here is it's getting into things that we haven't discussed yet. Hoping that this fixes it. And if it doesn't, then I'm just going to have to walk you through it as opposed to taking you through it. There we go. Now, notice I'm going to leave out the first name and the last name, and I get error messages. Now, they're not bad error messages. It says first name is required and last name is required. Notice if I put anything in here, now that one goes away. If I put anything in there, now that one goes away. Now just one more thing regarding these. Because normally what I'm going to end up doing, and I'm going to go back into my source code mode, is normally up on the top here, this is where we're going to start talking just a little bit about some CSS. And there's a little bit in here. It's got the height. Well, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a class that's called error. All right, and what I'm saying here is color red font weight bold. So what I'm saying is I want to associate a class called error, and I want to make sure that the text is red and the font weight's bold. Well, why would I want to do something like that? Let's take a look. So let's come back down, and we'll go back into our design mode. I'm going to click on this first one right here. All right, and where it says CSS class, I'm going to choose error. Notice it's now red. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to say CSS class, and I'm going to make it error, and the same thing. Let's change this from first name is required and last name is required, because I just want to make sure that it fits okay. So I've got first name required, and I'm going to put in here last name required. All right. You can already see how this is changing, but notice when I run it again, and I click Submit, now my error messages are in bold red. And again, as soon as I put something in, they go away. Okay. Now, what we will cover when we go, because we're going to have a whole lesson on these validation controls, I just decided to just quickly show them to you now. There's a compare validator. So we'll have two fields, two text boxes like this. One will say password and one will say confirm password. And we'll use the compare validator to make sure that the confirm password is exactly the same as the first password. Custom validator, if you've got some custom validations, maybe you've got a part number that has to be in a certain format, for example. Range validator, we could add a field here called age. And maybe the valid ages were something like 1 through 125. Regular expression, there are some built-in regular expressions and we can add our own. So for instance, if we wanted to make sure that we asked for a social security number, and we wanted to make sure that you put it in number, 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 dash, number, number, dash, number, 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 number format. We can use the regular expression pattern to do that. Okay. Required field validator I've already shown you. And the validation summary, in, instead of having all these error messages all over the place, what you can do is you can have a summary and just, just show all the messages at the bottom or at the top. All right. Okay, next are the navigation controls. And with the navigation controls, the ones that are here allow you to find your way through your site. All right, there's a tree view control, which shows a hierarchical display of data. It can be used to show the structure for your site. There's a site map path control. And if you've ever seen breadcrumb, breadcrumbs, where it kind of shows you where you are, all right, that's in there. All right, there is also a menu, which allows you to literally create menus. All right. There are the login controls. So again, literally, if I wanted to come in here 
and you see the stuff we have I'm going to remove a couple things I don't need the radio button and I don't need this list box but I could come in here and I could put in a login control and drop it in there okay and you see exactly what's in there we're going to have a lesson when we talk about the login controls like the data controls and like the validation controls they were introduced back in ASP.NET 2.0 and they're still used today so you'll notice if I save this now and run it uh, okay it still doesn't like it I get the same error message that I had before and the reason I'm getting those error messages is it's trying to come in here and save me by doing some some uh, checking for me Let's see. Well, again, I would have to go through a lot of stuff that we haven't talked about yet. I'm not sure, but it's possible. Let's see if I just disable that, if it, I still get the error message or not. Yep, I do. But you can see I will get a login control. That's not really how you use it. I just wanted to show you what the control looked like. All right, next we've got the web parts controls. And these controls enable the end user of a web page to change the look and feel. The end user, not the programmer. So this is where you could come in and ask somebody their favorite color. And if they said blue, you could make the background blue, something like that. We're going to do very little to nothing with that. Next are the AJAX controls. AJAX, again, is a, an acronym that stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It allows you, allows you to do partial page refreshes. I think it's important here to just break off for a second and take a look. And what I want to show you here is I'm going to go out to, uh, let's try Netflix. All right. And if I go out to Netflix, let's see, TV shows. Um, I thought it was Netflix where I showed this. I know one that will work. I'll go out to familyvideo.com. All right. And I'm going to come out here and look for, let's see. All right. So notice there's some movies here I can buy. If I take my, my mouse and I put it over the movie right here, what happens? Well, they have changed the way that their site works. So with some of these sites, what you see, and I, like I said, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it right now, but what used to happen is when you put your mouse over it, you'd get an explanation of what the movie was about. All right, I want to go back to Netflix and see if I can find that. So if you've ever gone out to a site and for whatever reason it's not showing right now, and that's okay. One of the things that that shows you is the fact that with some of these sites, they change, they're so dynamic that something that worked a week ago, a month ago, a day ago may not work right now. And believe it or not, that is okay. All right. But what I wanted to show you, and I'm not finding it on here, but what I wanted to show you was that if, if you have ever gone out to a site, 
you could sort of say that that's what this is like. So notice when I put my mouse over here how it's showing me a menu and when I get off it's not showing. But it's not redrawing the page to do that. It's using a form at least of Ajax. All right, not exactly the way I wanted to show it to you, but it'll work fine. Dynamic data that you see right here. The controls in this category are used, as you guessed, for dynamic data websites. They allow you to quickly build a user interface to manage data in a database. All right. We've got some reporting stuff here. There's a report viewer. And I believe that works with Crystal Reports. I've done very little to nothing with it. Notice I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the HTML for a minute. In general, there's nothing there. All right. HTML, these are your... All right, these are your controls that are client-side controls and not server-side. I'm going to remove that login control that I just put in, and I'm going to put in a couple of these. All right, for instance, I'm going to put in input text. There's the text box. And I'm going to put in an input button. There's a button, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some literal text in here. I'm going to put client side. And then underneath this, I'm going to put some more. And I'm going to say server side. All right. Right now, I'm just, for now, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm just trying to make some room on the screen here. All right. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add from the controls that we already saw, from our standard controls, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a text box. And right underneath that, right underneath it, I'm going to add a button. And there's a method to my madness, if you'll just bear with me for a second. When I go into source mode now, this is what I want to show you. And that is the difference between client-side and server-side controls. All right. These are our client-side controls right here. Notice it says input ID equals type equals. All right. Input ID equals type equals and value. So that was our button. We can say client button. And for the other one, we'll say server button. All right. But what I'm trying to get across to you is client-side controls. These are controls that are basically handled directly by the browser itself, not by the server, so they're handled on the client side. They have a type, an ID, all right, input is really basically a type, and a type attribute that, that displays in particular what type they are. They don't have run at equal server, and they aren't prefaced with ASP colon, because when you preface things with ASP colon, what that is saying is those are server-side controls. So those are controls that will be rendered on the server, not on the browser or client side. So again, they don't look really any different, but they react and act differently. All right. So what we did, again, in this lesson, all right, what we did in here is we talked a little bit about what ASP.NET is about. All right, we had a little bit of a reintroduction. We talked a little bit about the view state. Now, one thing to realize again, because I mentioned we're going to talk and mention it one more time, is that really HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol, the protocol that's used to both request things from a web browser and respond from the web browser is what's referred to as being stateless. And what this means is that the web server itself doesn't keep track of requests that come in from specific browsers. As far as the web server is concerned, each request made to it all right, stands on its own. The web server has no real recall of pages that you requested previously. And that leads to problems. Think about it. Think about if you have an e-commerce site where you have to go from page to page. 
So you buy something, you throw it in a shopping cart, then you go to check out. You have to be able to keep that information. So remember, by default, the web page does not do this on its own. Because each request is a standalone request, the server doesn't even fill it all up until after it's been posted back to the server. All right, ASP lets you get around this basically by using a combination of post back and this view state. There is a state engine that's built into ASP.NET and it's capable of storing the state for many of your controls. It can store state for user input controls like text boxes and other controls like labels and even calendars. So if I go back to my, this is the, the um, example that we've been kind of building as a class in this unit. If I right mouse click and choose, I shouldn't say that, let me run this. So let me save it and run it. Now what you'll notice as this comes up on the screen, when I right mouse click on it and I choose view page source, I get that view state in here again. And there's my view state information that it saved for me. That was provided automatically for me. All right, it was provided for me automatically by ASP.NET. Now not all controls rely on view state and that's okay. And view state, one of the things that happens is the view state engine adds a lot of information to your page. It may not look like it there, but it has to keep track of that information. So what happens is you can turn view state on, it's on by default, but you can also turn it off. So I could have gone into that web.config file that we saw earlier, and I could have literally put, in, put a, a pages attribute in there, and I could have set enable view state to false. So I can turn it off for the entire web page which will mean that the, the, the uh, program will run faster, but I don't have access then to that information. I can turn it off on a page level, and I can turn it off if I want to for each control. All right, so it's up to me to decide what I want to do and how I want to do it. Now, it's really important that you go back right now, and I think that you try to replicate the same program that I created in this example. In other words, what I'd like you to do, and for right now, we'll remove this client side button and we'll remove that text that I put in there and the client button and this text and this and this and we'll just, but I think you know now know enough where you can go in and try to replicate this example. So create a label a label, a label, and make sure that when you create these, all right, they're from the standard controls. Then a text box, a text box, a text box, a required field validator, and a required field validator, a hyperlink control, and a button. Once you've created the interface, go back and change your properties to make the first name, last name, and full name so not only change, the, when you go into the properties, change the name on all these. So again, in other words, let's go back and take a quick look at this. These should be referred to as label first name, text box first name, label last name, text box last name, label full name, and text box full name. Then go back and make all of these bold. All right, then add a couple required field validators. Call this one required field validator first name, required field validator last name. Remember, you have to set the control to validate on here. If you want to, feel free to add red and bold like I did. All right. Add again a hyperlink control, which I shouldn't call hyperlink one. Let's call this hyperlink go to Google. All right. And our button. Remember, if you double click on the button, you can put in the code. I'll put this code back up there again so you can see it. This is assuming that you are using my names, my naming structure in here. So it's text box full name dot text, which means that is 
the actual text that we're going to put in there equals the text box, <coughs> excuse me, the text in the first button, or the first text box, plus a blank space, plus what's in the last one. And make sure you put a semicolon on the end. All right? So, we did the reintroduction. We looked a little bit at view state and a little bit at post back. We went through the ASP.NET server controls in some detail. Again, we're going to be using them throughout the rest of this course. The data controls, I just mentioned them in passing because we're going to have a whole unit on those with databases. I showed you a simple example of one of the validation controls, that being the required field validator. Again, we're going to have a whole lesson on that, and we'll have a whole lesson on navigation controls. We looked at the login controls. I had a little bit of problems in there, but they will be rectified later. We're, we're not going to brush on the web parts controls anymore in this class, but we will talk about AJAX, the AJAX controls, which again are asynchronous JavaScript and XML controls to allow a partial page refresh. The dynamic data controls, thats we talked about them a little bit, and that's probably about all they're going to be covered for the rest. We looked a little bit at the HTML controls. We talked about the differences between the standard controls, the ASP.NET standard server controls, so that really should say standard, all right, and the HTML controls. And the fact that the standard controls are rendered on the server side and the HTML controls are rendered on the client side. We talked a little bit about, more about view, view state. I tried to give you a couple tips by asking you to come back in and try to replicate the example that I've created. All right, you really should spend some time trying out some controls, especially some of those in the standard category. You may want to consider turning off view, view state for controls that don't need it. We'll talk about that more in later lectures. Before you, do, you design a complex web form, step back and draw it. Just bring out a piece of paper. Draw it on a napkin. All right, draw it on a piece of paper. All right. That's it for this particular lecture. Next time we're going to go in and have a very brief little introduction to debugging where I'll show you the three basic kinds of errors that you can get in an ASP.NET program.